This session we will present in more detail what actually is going to happen in stage two and stage three of the program. I heard very carefully the sessions earlier and it was very interesting to see your expectations and actually what you feel the program should address. That's why I have a thinking mind here, trying to figure out what we're going to do next for the next two stages. You have a very good idea what we've done up to now. We know what stage one was. You fully understand what we try to build. At the end of session one, of the stage one of the advanced training, we started addressing a few more complicated issues. We started discussing about facility management. We started discussing about zoning. We just touched the subjects. But I believe all of you, you can see where we're heading to. It was very interesting to, st I tried to code and put together all your expectations. And uh, I grouped your expectations in three groups. Financial related expectations, <coughs> general issues that you would like to see uh, and address more general issues. But I would more uh, stay at the technical issues you addressed, which I found them very interesting. I also group them, first of all, to integration-related issues. This is questions that came from you. You asked, we want to have everything in one database. We want to have everything in one place. How the system will be integrated, incorporated with the rest of the systems in the utility? How are we going to integrate with our accounting, financial system? How are we going to integrate with the billing and our customers? How are we going to integrate with our SCADA and telemetry systems? That was major concerns from all of you. These are excellent questions because they're touching the heart of the matter. You want to see how the system will be integrated in your everyday practices in your existing systems and how will you be part of your infrastructure. I will not answer this question now. What I will do, I will go through the presentation, explain you what we're going to do over the next two stages, and see some of these questions, if they answer or not. And then I'm going to come back after the presentations and discuss them one by one. Some more questions you made. These were the integration issues addressed. One thing I like to say that we as a hydrocom, we're not just producers of software, we actually integrate us. This is our job. This is what we're doing. We know that when we go in a municipal environment, in a utility, they have systems. We're not going to rediscover F. We've been there. We know there is a billing system. We know there is a scale system. We know there is an accounting system. We know that the utility expects these things to be integrated. So this is part of our overall methodology, overall understanding. And they will be addressed in this session. So. One part of your questions were integration issues. Second part were related to maintenance and rehabilitation. You will ask us, what about management reporting? What about supporting our decision making? What are we going to do about that? You also asked about real calculation and amortization costs. I found that very interesting. And also, one gentleman asked the question, how do we move from reactive to proactive in our organization in the maintenance? And the last question, also very interesting, what's the logic of all this program? Why are we following these steps? Why are we following this methodology? Where are we getting to? What is the benefit for the municipality? Why are we doing what we're doing? That also will be addressed. The last part, were more interesting questions. They involved <laughs> more technical issues, and there were everything and anything that had to do with no revenue, leakage reduction, metering, upgrading, and hydraulic modeling. Now, the questions ranged, some of them were, how do we control the bulk meters and the measurements? What's the best practices? How do we use EDAMs to control non-revenue water? What we did this stage one, what actually has to do with non-revenue water? 
has anything to do with non-renewable water? <coughs> that was one of the questions. What about network dimensioning, as you mentioned, and improvement of the existing network? We know we have a problem. We know we have a problem, a, a network that's dysfunctioning, for whatever reasons. Because, like it was mentioned, in the past there were PLVs installed, because in the past there were <coughs> networks interconnected like a spaghetti system, and nothing makes sense anymore, and we can't make sense out of it. What do we do about it? How, what we do now will help us in this process? That was another question. And then, okay, what we've been told is hydraulic analysis. Where is the hydraulic analysis? Why are we not doing hydraulic analysis? Why are we just capturing data? <coughs> that was another question. And the last one had to do with demand. I had a gentleman mentioning that the huge variation they have from the high season to the low season and how that impacts the actual capacity of the system. That's also a serious question, a more complicated one. So, these two, three sets of technical questions were addressed, were mentioned earlier. I will try partially to address them through what we're going to do in stage two and three. And then I'm going to come back to these questions after the presentation. So I hope you find this session interesting. So my agenda is to describe what will happen next year, 2018, and what will happen in 2019. And in the process, I hope you will see the logic and how the puzzle is built up. So, what are we doing in stage two? Stage two, the heart of it is maintenance. Now, I know that everybody wants to jump into non-revenue water. Everybody wants to do hydraulic analysis. Everybody wants to go to the end. Unfortunately, this is a bit more lengthy road. We have to address step by step one thing at a time. First of all, we have to have the actual networks on the ground into the system. Secondly, we have to address maintenance practices. We have to address maintenance records. Why? Because maintenance records are the heart of the problems in the system. That's what the problem, the proper recording of the history of maintenance will give us an indication of the problems also will help us understand how the zoning performs. We can't jump to non-revenue water without addressing maintenance. So, stage two is maintenance. We have to do a number of things to improve maintenance practices. And the purpose of maintenance, we can summarize in three steps. By addressing the maintenance function, we improve productivity. We improve service delivery, and of course, we collect maintenance records and failure records for condition assessment. Condition assessment, don't forget it. We move in towards rehabilitation planning. We want to control rehabilitation. That's where the money is. That's where the investment is. That's where the budget is. We have to, stage three, look into rehabilitation. If we don't manage to look into rehabilitation, you will never control your costs. But to do that, we have to have reliable maintenance. We have to have properly recorded the maintenance related to our assets. So we can't jump steps. We have to follow the full roadmap. So in the process of next year, we will address people, processes, and information systems, which must be improved to enable proper maintenance operations according to what we understand and what we have learned and what we have developed from our experience that is best practice. End of last year, or not last year, last training session, we looked into, we touched the subject of movable fixed assets. And we said that, look, this is not just about networks. <laughs> What we're developing is an asset management infrastructure. What we want to do is record all our assets. You must think of it out of the box. We're not only looking at the networks. Yes, the networks are the most important. Yes, we understand that. That's the source of the problem. 
But a pump station has a lot of assets there, has a lot of items. A, a small treatment plant has hundreds of equipment there. Where are these recorded? I heard from a number of gentlemen here that how are we going to link to the accounting system? Yes, very good question. How are you going to link to the accounting system? You haven't recorded everything here. How are you going to link? You need to create a full, reliable, technical database. One full source technical database if you ever want to link to your financial system. That's the answer to your question. So don't think only in terms of networks. Yes, your emphasis is the networks. But things also in terms of facility management. Things in, ter in terms of your treatment plants, in terms of your plants, in terms of your pump stations, your reservoirs. What is there? Everything that is there must be part of the system. So we expanding what we're doing to also record anything that has to do with fixed and movable assets and facility management. We want everything in, in one database, as the gentleman said. We want everything in one database. Yes, we also want that. We want one database with all your assets, all your networks, and all your elements. And in that process, we try to make it easy for you. We have developed a whole components library where we have created more than 150, 200 standard as types of assets that the utility has. You just pick and choose. We know that is in a treatment plant. We know what is in a reservoir site. We know what is in the pump station. You just have to build it up. And you have to build the hierarchy. So we touched the subject in the final training a couple of a month ago. But we're coming back in force. In the trainings next year, this is the opening subject, facility management. We explain you again but in more detail, how you have to build all your equipment. And we explain you how you classify equipment and how you classify and you build the hierarchy in a treatment plant with the different equipment and so on. So we want you to record everything. You managers. One part is the network, the other is your equipment, your facilities, everything that you have in the utility. Don't think that stage one finished. There is no stage one. <coughs> stage one goes indefinitely. Don't think that you finished because in a couple of months the first year finishes. We just started. Any stage we start, it just opens forever. That's our intention anyway. <laughs> But it must be the, your intention also. You started building your asset registry. You will continue building it. Don't think of deadline. There is no deadline here. You're not supposed to finish by February. Yes, it would be nice. It would be very nice if you managed to capture everything. But it's not necessary. Think of it that you established a unit or a number of people that they're building this asset registry. They learn how to do it. They learn the procedures. And they will continue doing it. They will continue doing it indefinitely. They should, you should have somebody responsible for capturing and maintaining the assets. For bigger utilities, might be a number of people. Or smaller, might be one person. But the fact is, somebody must be responsible. So, beginning of next year, we're going to touch facility management as an introduction to maintenance. And uh, what we will address is computerization of the maintenance function. Call center, if you don't have a computerized call center, that will be part of what we're doing. We want to have back-to-back -back integration. We want when somebody phones, that phone call to be recorded, to be forwarded to a foreman or somebody else, to open a job card, that job card to go to somebody else, and somebody must close the job, and the call the, the person who got the call to say, yes, madam, yes, sir, your problem has been addressed. I see it here. There is a crew out there. It's fixing the problem. It will be completed in an hour. That's what we want to do. By doing that, you're improving not only your maintenance, you improve your customer relations. You're improving your customer service. So, go 
call center and customer service is very important. The incident management, there is an emergency. What happens? Should I find the number of the foreman? Who is responsible? How is addressed? How is recorded this incident? And work order management. All these job cuts happen. People are going out, fixing things, completing the jobs. Where are they recorded? How are they recorded? Do we have a system? Do we have a procedure? What is the best practice for recording the work orders? And management reporting. End of the day, most of you here are managers. You want to see what comes out of the system. You want to be able to do your job. You want to be able to do budgeting, job uh, cost control, and so on. How do you get your reports? How do you get your outstanding job? How do you get what is going wrong with the whole maintenance function? Don't forget, you know better than us that your maintenance is your biggest cost center in the utility. That's where you have most of your cost, your operational costs. So controlling that cost is critical to the survival of a utility. And of course, as we said, job costing, budgeting, and performance indicators. At the heart of everything are the job cuts. We're going to explain you, we actually we went through the progress with Greg Weavers some years ago. How to have a proper job card, how to develop them, how to establish them, and how to computerize them. In general, I will show you an example of, of a complicated workflow. This is for a big utility of the size of BBK. But it doesn't matter, the principle is the same. So, if you receive a call, Somebody must, if you have more than one depot or station, that call must be sent there for investigation. <clears throat> somebody must go out and find out what is wrong and examine it. And somebody must schedule the job. That is a work in progress, and when it's completed, somebody must close it. Sounds simple? Yes, it is simple. But to enforce it is complicated. It took BBK something like five years. If it looks obvious to you, it's not that obvious. It's the most difficult thing to convince a maintenance department to follow specific steps. They used to doing things in a certain way and very difficult they change. Of course, there are different permutations in this flow diagram. Some calls are rejected. Some of them are emergencies that have to happen immediately. Some investigations, they don't need further processing. Or certain work in progress, you go out, you see, ah, by the way, this is also broken. I need to open a new job card. What do I do? I go back and I issue a job card, a new investigation, and so on. So the different permutation of this logic, but that's what we want to standardize. We want to computerize and fully standardize in all your utilities. This process will be supported again by the EDAM system. The heart of the system is what we call maintenance requests. The system understands and it has a whole library of maintenance activities. So you're going to see when you start the process, we have a library, a full library of a thousand standard activities that the utility is doing. All of it translated in Serbian and in Bosnian. So this is what the utility does. This is your Bible, this is your best practice. If you replace a meter, that's what you do. You go there, you take it out, you clean. It's 10 steps. That's the best practice. You might say you do it differently, fine. You can customize it. But we from our side, we're telling you what is the standard practice and how, how it is developed. So we have all these maintenance activities and Based on that, the different requests, maintenance requests come, either from a call center or from ad hoc request. Somebody came out, or a field team or a foreman and saw something is wrong and he's reporting it. He wants immediately something to happen. That's a maintenance request. And all what we want to move the utilities to is to programs. That question of the gentleman said we want to move from, from reactive 
to proactive. That was an excellent question. That's exactly what we're trying to do. We want to introduce as much programs as we can into the utility. Programs like routine programs or preventive programs. Preventive programs are statistical programs. Like you have a 10 cars and you say I'm maintaining these cars every so many kilometers. That's a preventive program. Or proactive programs. And altogether, the maintenance requests are translated to work orders. And the work orders are job cards. Job cards are open, job cards are closed. And what do they create? They create a history of jobs and a lot of possibilities. A lot of possibilities. These possibilities we want to create because 90% of your management reporting comes from maintenance. So having <coughs> everything captured in the right way, we can start doing proper management reporting and proper decision making support. We can analyze the data, we can do budgeting, we can have performance indicators, we can do more advanced mm -hmm. failure analysis and so on and so on. What you also see here is a typical screen of the system. But the fact that this system has been developed a lot based on the experience, on the long experience from Belgrade Waterboard. With the, their systems, we redesigned completely the system. But the fact remains that it's simple. The screen might look complicated, but it's only that screen. Here is your network. Here is your hierarchy. Here is your backlog. Everything is in red. It's outstanding there. And everybody sees the same screen, but different list. Everything against his name, he sees what he hasn't done. It's his backlog, as we say. What he needs to do. Everything is here. You manage by backlog. You as managers, you can go in and in five minutes, you can see for every single employee of you what he hasn't done, what is outstanding. You can manage immediately by exception. You can see what is outstanding against his name, what is his backlog, why it hasn't happened. So you're taking control of your main maintenance function. And as I said earlier, by doing this part, we can start addressing other things in terms of supporting the management and the decision making. Budgeting, job costing, performance indicators. They all, if data are captured properly with the standard procedures, the reports are easy. If your data are a mess, <coughs> everything is a mess. Even a simplest report is very difficult to produce. So, job costing becomes easy. Time sets. Exactly how much time its employee is going to spend programming his time over the next week, over the next month, what activities are outstanding, how much it's going to cost. And a whole list of more than 150 to 200 available reports at your fingertips that immediately can use and produce and customize according to your requirements. All the functionality is there. These are reports, again from UVK, overview of faults repaired, number of faults per zone, per DMA, <coughs> number of faults per month, outstanding job cuts against its name, jobs that haven't happened, schedule, planned jobs, and a lot of graphical reports. Don't forget, we had the very nice idea to capture the networks. So because we have the networks, now we can see everything graphically. So I can see how many breakdowns of pipes I had last year, and how many pipes were repaired more than three or four times in the zone. I can see it immediately, in a month. Because I have the networks. And I can link the job cards to the networks. These activities of next year will be accompanied by two training courses. The first training course is the introductory. We'll teach you, as I said, the facility management and also how the system operates, how you should record the calls, 
how you should do maintenance management, how do you schedule the work process. So, and in the process, the hubs will assist you to set it up, to operate it, and to follow the right procedures. And we're going to come back, and once you build that history, we're going to discuss exactly the whole process of analyzing the data, how do we manage our work orders, and how we use the different tools for budgeting, for audit trail, for performance evaluation, and so on and so on. So, this is the main target of next year. And it's actually the calendar of activities starts from April. Preliminary, we have the first training course scheduled for end of April. And uh, the advanced training, sometime beginning of September. And hopefully we'll all be here again in December for the workshop. So these are the three main events for next year for stage two of the program. So it's a difficult stage. It's a tricky stage. It's a very intense stage. The difficulty lies on you more than us. We can support all this infrastructure. We can support this system. Your responsibility is to enforce it. When I say enforce it, I'm saying it again. The most difficult thing in a utility is to change practices in the maintenance division. Remember that. I think you will agree with me. <laughs> it's the most difficult thing. It sounds easy, it's not. It's almost impossible to go to a foreman that does something in a certain way, in a piece of paper the last 30 years, and tell him, no, stop. From tomorrow you'll do something else. It's difficult. So that's what you be faced, and we have experienced how this process is managed, and we're going to assist you. But what I'm saying is, we can't bypass this step. It's critical. We can't just go in into stage three and talk about non-revenue waters and all these other things, wonderful things you want to discuss. We can't. We have to address maintenance first. That's the logic of the program. You build your registry, you build your history of maintenance records, and then you move into the other subjects. There is no sidelines. There is no other roadmap to our methodology. 